Action. Hello, hello. <clears throat> yes, sir. <laughs> you heard that? I sure did. All right. <clears throat> All right, restart. Okay, we're restarting, all right? Hi, guys. Uh, today, we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Rebecca Fanai. Um, she has joined us, um, even though she's very busy. She's got a lot of stuff going on, but she's joining us. She squeezes us in, right? Um, so we want to say thank you, first of all. Um, so, yeah, I want to give you a chance to talk about yourself a little bit. What's your, well, we know your name is Rebecca, right? What do you do? Uh, what other things are you doing outside of music, right? Because we know you do a little bit of music, but yeah, I'll give you a chance. Go ahead. Cool, cool. Well, thanks for having me. Um, this is probably like my first podcast where I'm just sitting down. So I, I love it. I've been meaning to do podcasts by myself. I mean, start one myself as well. So this will be a good good time for me to learn and see as well. Um, yeah, so I sing here and there. I would say sing is more so um, not a side job because it's not really a job for me, you know. But it's something that I do on the side. So I'm actually an RN. I have my bachelor's in nursing. I graduated a couple of years ago, so I've been working, um, except last year I paused for a little bit for traveling since I had to travel out of the country, you know? Um, but now I'm back to work, and um, we don't work every day, so nurses, we do 12-hour shifts three days a week. So I kind of schedule myself um, in a way that I can still travel and do the things that I need to do on the weekends, yeah. Appreciate yeah, that's crazy that. to me. Um, I did. You travel yeah. to for music? Yeah, I did. Um, so I never intended to do music this way, right? Mm. I would say I did grow up with music. I started piano lessons probably when I was like seven. Um, hated it. <laughs> hated practicing to the core. But um, it's been a blessing. Like, you know, hindsight 2020, you can't see it. But now it's been a blessing. So with that, college music started and the coup happened. Mm -hmm. We did one music video, which um, the Chin TV team saw. And so it just cascaded. And I think God gave me this platform now to be able to travel, to sing. But at the same time, I think it's also for me to experience our culture. Because even though I grew up in Burma, I grew up in Kalimio, and then I left after that. So I never really understood the Chin American culture that we have here until I started traveling like two years ago. Yeah. So wait, so now I should live in Kalimio on the tongue there? Yep, yep. Wow, I was wow. born in Falam. In Falam. Right, um, but we moved when I was two. So Kalimio, oh, wow. I was there until I was 12. So Kalimio, um, a lot of the boys were from uh, Jain oh, too. So really? Jain is Tahan. Yeah, yeah, Tahan. It's not a yeah. quest okay. of him. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> we, Jain Kwa Ke, it's about nine miles from Kalimio. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we, we all grew up there, but that's crazy. We go to Kalimio all the time. Uh, when did you come to the U.S.? Uh, 2012. So before I came to the U.S., my family, we, <laughs> we lived in the Philippines for three years. Yeah, so no I went way. to the Philippines first. My dad is a pastor. That's right. Okay, yeah. talk us about. Wait, hold on. So yeah. PK, Philippines, PK. Philippines, three years. Alert. Philippines, three years. Yes. And then you came here after that. Correct. Was she? Uh, was your father doing um, school over there, or was he uh, pastoring? Glimio, he was a principal, so we owned our school there. But he's always wanted to become a pastor, so they wow. saved up enough uh, to self-sponsor, and left the business, everything. Then we went to the Philippines. He did his MDiv, got a call to pastor like. The last couple of months before we left, it was it was kind of wild. In all of this, you know, I, I grew in ways that I d couldn't see back then because none of the decisions that was made for my family was ever my choice. Like, like so many things kept happening, but um, it's made me more extroverted, uh, more open to change as well. But yeah, so we went to the Philippines, went back to Burma for like visa stuff, and then we came straight to the U.S. Um, for his pastoral ministry. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, a lot of us can need kids a refugee can say. <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. No, of course not. But um, you know, God brings us together um, in this moment of time, right? In right. very different ways. Real quick, you travel where to? Europe, Australia? Um, for singing. I actually haven't been to Europe for singing. Um I heard that they were inviting me and then I'd already accepted somewhere else. So the Europe part didn't work. I did go to travel, uh, did travel to Europe last year with my family, but it was not for music stuff. Uh, but I did go to Australia. Um, I went to Singapore for the singing stuff as well. Um, Canada a couple of times singing now. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for singing, sorry. Very humble, very humble. I like um, for, it. For singing. And most of the time it's um, either like TV, like conferences or for fundraising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, I hear a lot of people talk about life being different here in the United States yeah. from Australia, Europe, especially for Lyme people too. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Missouri 
last week at farm Chin Baptist Church. I was I'm always there to teach music, but the one of the teachers was um, telling me he was like, yeah, because uh, they they all do farm. They all do they all, they all have their own business, right? Um, I think I can. The teacher was telling me it's very different when we tell our relatives in Australia and Europe how we live and how we work. And they were like, "Oh, you guys work crazy. You guys are crazy." How true is that? How true is that? You've been you've been to Australia. You've been to Europe. How true is that for Limey people? How different is it really? Um, I, so the work life balance. I think it would be hard for me to understand because I never actually got to experience that. Mm -hmm. You know, so for for someone that's just visiting, I think it's kind of hard to say. It's kind of a gray area, but I would say there's a different culture to it. Um, even though we think, okay, it's like, you know, Western culture, there is still a different culture, uh, whether you go to Europe or Australia. Right. The Europe, we stayed in Germany for a couple of days as well, so I got to like meet them, you know, there um, from the Chin churches there as well. Australia, people are a lot nicer. <laughs> We Americans need, can do Wait, better. Pe people isn't like limey people or just like people overall, in general? Overall, like overall, people in just just in general, like you go to a store, you know how they greet you here in America? They do too, but it's kind of like yeah, monotone, yeah. like I, I'm here just to, like, to do yeah. my job kind of tone, right? Um, but people will ask you and talk, talk to you and like it's just very chill. So that might play into the work culture as well where things are like they're just a lot more laid back. Right. What I do really appreciate that I learned a lot of when I met people there and um, I'm still friends with a lot of them to this day, which is really cool as well, is they have a much better system of education. Mm. So that might play into the work thing, right? Because here a lot of us study because right. we're passionate about certain um, mm -hmm. courses, but we don't have the means to support ourselves, especially if our parents are the first generation to get here. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's loans and grants that we're depending on. And then the next couple of years of working is paying back those things that we own. For them, the government sets a certain amount. So let's say that you get out of um, whatever job, the, f the first paying or second whatever. If you never make enough to that tier that they have you at, you don't ever have to pay it back. So only if you make, wow. if you reach that, then you start paying it's back. It's the system, bro. I've been yeah. telling you. And they, they have um, other programs. That's not just like schooling. Mm -hmm. You know, you can mm -hmm. start learning um, trade schools, they have so many options for those. So it just, it's a different perspective of the way they view education as well, which I think is really cool. Yeah. What's crazy is they have the money to do it. Here, if you, so. Like the support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 300 yeah. some million people here in the United States. And if every single, not every single one, but like, let's say most of the youth were to do school like that, right? Mm -hmm. Where would the funding come from? I'm sure they, I'm sure they could pull funding from somewhere else. But, you know, like I said, it's it's a bureaucracy and like no sorry not like Swiss said right it's a system, um, but <clears throat> I guess I could there there could be an argument for both right one side could be like um, yeah they have all this kind of support and all that kind of stuff but how are the taxes right yeah, the taxes yeah. could be a little higher um, here in the United States I think at the moment right for us Limey people that want to work and that want to do some business stuff the U S is the best place at the moment for Limey people I think what we see going on in farm in, in Missouri is we are replacing the Hmong population right there. So it used to be all the chicken farms used to be owned by Hmong, chicken and turkey. Sorry. Used to be owned by Hmong. Now we're slowly replacing them, right? The Hmong have been there 20, 30 years. They've, they've worked it. They're rich. They're moving back into the cities. That's what I uh, see. He's the music director there. That's what he told me, right? He was like, we're replacing the Hmong population here. And so I think for, Limey people in general, I think the United States is probably, I got a little defensive because uh, because I have friends that came over from Australia. They were like, oh, the U.S. is trash. The U.S. is that. The U.S. is this. So this, that. Is, this is his platform right now <laughs> to, to let out all that anger. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's I'm sorry. Session. Yeah, it's just, right, right. They, they were bashing the United States. They were like, nah, U.S. is about to see gun violence. I'm like, if you had the choice to be here in the United States or Australia, you pick here. I said, you know, I told him that, but I don't know. That's a, that's, that's to each their own, right? Um, so let me get back to the music stuff because we, most of us know you as a musician, as a singer, why music? So you're successful in life at the moment. I think you're very successful, registered nurse. You got your life set, right? Why music? Was this like, like you said, was it something that you didn't choose and it just happened? Or was it like a side passion that actually became like a real thing? Talk us through that. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned like growing up and learning piano and guitar, I kind of picked it up when I was in the Philippines because a bunch of our friends would play. So we'd just mm -hmm. sit around. I knew like maybe five chords, right? <laughs> I was just playing along right. with that. Um, but when I moved to the States, I started going to high school here. It's a private Christian high school. So we had chaplain um, chapel sessions, right? So our chaplain 
kind of found out that I play music and she was like, hey, do you want to play? And I, I, I promise I knew like five chords and I don't know what got in me. I was like, yeah, I'll do it, right? So every time we had chapel, I didn't even have a guitar. It was, it just moved here. Pastoral money is not there. Mm. Um, I don't, also don't like asking my parents for stuff, you know, and if I can try to figure out other things. Um, so I would always rent my friend's guitar, uh, mm. learn here and there. But by the end of the year, the talent that God had given me from the beginning of me just saying yes had grown so much. Mm. And I saw it, but I didn't see it enough until I got to college. Uh, when I got to college, I also went to a private Christian uni as well. And... I did worship leading for five years. So I think that's where my that's where my love and appreciation for music grew. Because there would be sets where I learned so much about music, but I also learned how music, how God really created music. Right. Because he used music in so many different ways that I didn't know he could. Um, for myself and for people that, that were there. So there would be sets where I'm like, oh, this sounds so good. The band is so tight. Like we sound so great right now. And then I wouldn't really have reactions from people that came to church or to the services, you know, in terms of saying this meant to, like so much to me. Or there would be sets where I'm like, God, like I'm not even feeling the music. Like what is going on? And then I have someone text me and say, Becca, yeah. your set was for me. I just needed that today. Like that's exactly what I need. So I learned so much about how God works through music, which also is why I'm very careful in choosing what mm -hmm. type of music I listen to mm -hmm. not necessarily the genre but mm -hmm. the words mm -hmm. that come with it because I've experienced so much with it so I think that's where my appreciation love for music grew because as a kid I kind of just got forced into learning it mm -hmm. which I didn't love but I think college is where I grew and I I came to really love it and now I appreciate it now I get to do this to help people in return mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. God really just took me from here put me here and put me here and he, he just keeps taking it to places that I didn't know I was going to be at, you know. I'm grateful, definitely. Becca here, yeah, she's a very humble person, that's why. Philip, I'm not sure if you're going to be a little bit of 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 to places and you know I get invited to teach music for about a week mm -hmm. sometimes right that's the most time I can give uh, most of the time right um but I've noticed I've heard parents say kan fale hi music tum ta kan du tuk na ve tha na kan pek du tuk ko na but an from lo wa ve ve te kan te ton what do you think someone like you who's a little bit more successful in in music than you know than most of the, most of the people here right most of the limey kids what do you th what do you think what kind of support did you have that what other kids didn't? What sets you apart? Right. Yeah. Ooh, what sets me apart? Uh, <laughs> so I think back then, like when I started in Burma, we didn't have many options of choosing what kind of instruments or what, you know, what, what kind of topic of music you want to go into. Piano was like one of the things that was more common. So I never really got a choice on whether I wanted to do music, but I'm glad my parents put me into it. So I would say my mom would play a big factor into me continuing to be able to play piano. Back then we didn't have phones in the beginning where you could like having, this is gonna make me sound so old. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that we didn't have phones. Pushing 30. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop Wait. it, sweet no, no, down. No, no, relax guys. No, chill, but, chill, um, chill, chill, chill. so <laughs> we had phones, but I think that was like when Nokia was a thing and you oh. couldn't be on internet all the time oh. yet. <laughs> Right. Push By the way, I was not in the states, so in in the Philippines, like yeah. that was the thing. And then iPhone came in, but my mom would say you would use internet and Facebook like on your computer, like mm -hmm. the desktop was a thing then, right? Mm -hmm. And within five years, like things changed so much. But I remember my mom would say the amount of time you spend on the computer watching or being on Facebook is the amount of time you have to practice. Mm -hmm. So I was forced in a way that it still made sense, you know, like. I wasn't told to, you can't, right? I was still given the time to do the things that I wanted to do, but there was kind of a limit that my mom put. So discipline from my parents in a sense. So there's support, but there's also the discipline. So right, right. the time would go like, tick, tick, tick when I was practicing and then <laughs> vice versa, right? So, but I think definitely support, but enough guidance into it. Yeah. I think we're all at a different a uh, different time in our journey, right? A different yeah. place in our journey, right? So for Becca, you're you're different from you're different from <laughs> us, right? Okay. Josh, 
I I'm sure this is something that you can relate to too, right? You're you're in a different place than us, right? In your music journey, um, what what do you think that you have, or what do you think that you could have had, right? That would have made it a little bit easier for you. Could have had, yeah. What do you think that you could have had? Oh, magnetimi question like like answering the question I think. Nakahalindan question. I would say I would I would say I would have wanted my family support. To mm. play music and like all this stuff, I didn't mm. get that. So then, kaya karon na kantun na nagchake to to oh vocal love song lo tukay ngalo. An ma tinir an lung tuk tukay an zoom vid kaya how zoom lo bak tuk zit lux yung nakaiter na zong music nakaiter na zong an tiem lo lo. Ah, kasi tuk ko hoy hoy pag kane ah two of them went to you know music class and one ended up you know perfect, but the other one. They went to same school. Pa kaka cha zoom lo, don't know. Bia la tumbiti lo. So like, ma 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 bang nakin na zoom zoom vi hal, don't know. Bia cha. Yeah. Can I can I add to the question of like what we did different? I think now the kids that are up and coming that are learning mu- music, they are no longer in Chin culture. They're kind of in the Chin American culture. Right. So exactly the point you said of they need to have a passion for it because they know their options. They know other passions and other things they can be a part of. And also parents can't just be anymore, right? When I was a kid growing up, when I was seven, eight, my mom could still do that. I also did not have that many other options as well. Mm-hmm. Like whatever my mom says, I got to do. Mindset was still very much so there. So I think that's the difference. I agree with you. There's got to be passion now. You know, I'm gonna go off on a little tangent. If I have No, when I have kids, not if. When I have kids, right? <laughs> when I have kids, I'm gonna be a straight dad. I'm gonna say it now. I'm gonna be a straight dad. Mm-hmm. Like, you can have your freedom. You can have your own thing. Whatever, do your thing. But if I say something, you gotta respect me. You know, mm. I, I can see it. Yes, I I would discipline <laughs> them. Yeah. Like I would I, I wouldn't hit them that hard. But like a little smack on the butt, I do it. Mm. Like you know, that's disrespectful. You know, as a parent, God gave me the right. I think you know. When I'm a parent, God gave me the right to discipline my children. I'm gonna Ooh, do that. We are going to. They got consumed because <laughs> America. You're throwing on thin water. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> America, I hint like me, like me, can be no pun not kid. The little kids, they're so disrespectful. Mm-hmm. I think it's only gonna be this generation because in our generation, kan ma zong like mi rong hok kan tiem ve zong right. We can do the things that the kids can do right now. The kids, the young children, right, the young, the young generation, they're feeling like oh, can you look about this man and tail up. They can get so disrespectful, right? And and the parents believe in that too. Like the parents fall into that trap too. You know, I can't stand that. Me, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Like, I I discipline my kids. I discipline my kids. Stop. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, sorry, I had to get that out of the way. Situn, um, let me go into this. It ties into a little bit of this, right? What do you do? What what secrets do you have? You were. Re- Right, nurse, nursing school, <laughs> yeah, music. Yeah. I don't know if you worked, but you know, if you did other, you had to do other stuff, right? Think uh-huh. I can. How did you balance that? What do you have any advice for us? So work, life, balance, school, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? Music, passion, music, yeah. hobby. Yeah. And you said. Mizo hold zong na kan chimpato, please. Mizo hold zong na. So kan say don't swan in. Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if we're gonna talk right. about it, yeah, mm-hmm. I did work. I actually had three jobs in college. Um, I did, but the jobs that I had was also things that I was passionate about. Right. So I wanted to earn enough to be able to eat out with friends and do, you know, get myself some stuff without having to ask my parents. Mm-hmm. So I did enough. Um, I worked. I think I worked more hours than I should have being in nursing school, but I would say. One of the things that I do regret, my grades were fine. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say my GPA. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, no, I graduated with 3.9, which is. Bro, don't don't ever say that. She she brought she brought it out like it was really I'm bad. No, I'm not gonna say that 3.9. <laughs> nah, don't do that. Sorry, don't not mean that. to do that. But I was gonna. I'm say, not gonna reveal mine after that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would say that I didn't prioritize nursing school as much as I should have. Mm. So if you're still in school. Right, some some circumstances, obviously, you might have to do part time, which is totally understandable. But mm-hmm. I think if you are edu- uh, pursuing education for a reason, then that needs to be your priority at the moment, not work. Mm-hmm. So whether you are waitressing somewhere or you are working at a boba shop, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like you're getting something in to to support yourself. So at that time, school should, be, should still be your edu- um, priority. So I would re- saying that I kind of regretted 
taking my extracurriculars and the other jobs that I had because they were kind of like extracurriculars. Um, I worked as an ambassador in the school, so people would come and I'd give them tours and take them around. Um, I did um, worship director job, like it was a paid job. I did mission work. I traveled to like Haiti and other places as well. So I did wow. like a lot of other stuff on the side, which really helped me grew, but I should still have prioritized education. But I would say if you, if you have something that you love and you get an opportunity for it, jump into it. Like don't hesitate. Mm. Maybe your talent is this much at that moment, but it's gonna become this much, you know? Cause the only way you learn is really stepping out of your comfort zone and being, pushing yourself. Mm. Like I didn't know how to plan mission trips. I didn't know how to organize things when I first said yes to the job. I just loved it. So I went to Haiti for a mission trip for two, year, uh, two weeks. And one time our chaplain sat me down and said, hey Becca, I think you should take this position next year. I can see you do this. Ooh. Um, and I was like, wow, let me pray about it. I prayed about it. So the next year I took the position. I planned the whole entire trip, including booking tickets and like finishing everybody's schedules. It was hectic. If I wasn't in a nursing building, I was in the office planning things, you know. Um, but I grew so much. Like finding so, passion. I would say we keep talking about passion, but I think that's it too. I would do anything to have your resume. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. That's a very good Type resume. Stuff, bro. That's, that's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Let how would your day how did your day look like right and how At does school? it look like now oh, uh -huh. yeah what does your typical college day life. Right? Mm -hmm. i miss college except for the studying part <laughs> um <laughs> uh, very busy i would say there was never really a day that i rested so some of you might not know um, i'm seventh-day adventist so that means i go to church mm -hmm. on sabbath i also went to seventh-day adventist university so saturdays were rest days mm -hmm. sundays were study days um so saturdays would be days where i did music with friends we would travel to different churches or around campus there were several churches as well uh, we did music and the rest of the afternoon was the rest day right mm -hmm. but other than that other than that it would be every day would be studying and um doing the jobs like I didn't do work every day with the same thing so it would like rotate right now <laughs> very much different um so since I went back to school I mean since I went back to work after traveling I'm still doing part-time so that insists of me uh, consists of me doing two full days a week unless I'm asked to go in and pick up a job uh, other than that is the traveling um I've been out every other weekend what it's weddings or for retreats like here um, and other future plans as well. But I'm also, as a PK, Suche understands this, I think. There are some expectations yep, yep. that are put on you. Last year I was the Minot leader. This year I'm the assistant Minot leader. I, I told them to not put me there and then they still put me as an assistant <laughs> <laughs> to the leader. And um, I also am um, the head of our children's department. So I'm always planning events and taking them out for ice skating and little stuff here and there for their kids, yeah. Here at Chatbox, mm -hmm. we try to pick the thoughts and the brains of like me kids, like me people, okay? We want to be able to, not influence, but we want to show um, the younger generation how we think so that in, in the hopes that, right, it could maybe give them guidance and it could give them a reference as to how they should feel, how they should think about certain topics, certain things, right? Think I can, <clears throat> what is one controversial thing, controversial opinion, thought, um, even topic, like a statement, like, right? Observation mm -hmm. that you have that people might not agree no with. Uh -huh. No pressure at all. Uh, here's my unqualified thought. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> I think because now we are no longer just in a Chin culture. I've talked about, I already mentioned this, right? The Chin American culture, because we are living in America. We're gonna continue to live in America. So I think that we need to adapt with the Chin, like American culture as well, because the kids that are gonna grow up are not gonna just be in a Chin bubble anymore. Like we just have to understand that, but also we have to also teach them and you know help them understand enough to not forget their roots. So it's a very it's a very tough topic to like balance out, right? Yeah, um, I could see you know for you to say it like that, heart but yeah, Let me ask you some questions then, yeah. right? When you get married, joint bank account or separate? Oh, I actually. Joint. I want to have joint and separate. And separate. But my husband would still. Shoot, let it, bro. <laughs> you picking you. No, CJ, go ahead. Go ahead. What do, what do you want to do? Sorry. <laughs> no, no. What I'm trying to say is right. He no, said Josh. he said joint, right? As soon as you said uh, joint and then separate, he said joint and separate. <laughs> but anyway, on the spot like that, bro. <laughs> my fault, gang. Um, but so joint and separate. Right, joint and separate. Joint for like all the things that we like house bills and everything, right? Separate in a terms of because I want to be able to support my family enough, like. You know, if I have, like you, 
I said if, but when, <laughs> God willing, <laughs> when I have kids, I do want to be there 100. percent But it will come a time when they grow up, and mm-hmm. I will do something that I'm passionate about, which might make some income. Maybe, maybe not. If it does, then I do want to have that separately. Mm. But my husband will still have access to it, and he can All still right. see the in and outs of it. Okay, that's, okay, that's what I want. All right, all right. How about this? <laughs> Philip is tingling. <laughs> What does that mean, bro? All right, don't put me on the spot like that. Um, so what? Uh, <laughs> um, real quick. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, who cooks? Uh, Let me answer this one. Both. 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 Whoa. Oh, Josh. <laughs> I, I think I'd both. Say, I'd say the woman, but I have I have a reason, and I could back that up. But what, who who should cook? Wait, what's your reason? Because you don't okay. cook. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I no, I I can Let cook. Know how to cook, RT, That's I, it. I, no, bro, I that's can't okay. cook. But um, so <laughs> I'm very traditional, right? Um, I think the man is the breadwinner, right? It could be different here in the United States. It could be different. Yeah. But in my household, I'm gonna be, you the, breadwinner, will be the breadwinner, right? Yeah. In my household, I want my wife to cook. I want her to clean. I'll help her clean, but cooking, I don't know. It's like, cause I gotta say, my mom, very traditional, very good cook. Like, right? So that's the example that I grew up with. Right. I want I want to model that. I want that kind of wife. But so go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. I did hear you say though. Both. Well, what did I say? You said both. Oh, both? I mean, yeah. Um I'm a very good cook. And I'm gonna have a loving wife. <laughs> no, no, he's right? no, he's decent. He's decent. I'm, he's I'm decent. Ve- <laughs> decent. <laughs> Understatement. <laughs> but hey man, Johnny has stayed in my food. You like it, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right go ahead go ahead go ahead he's acting up he's acting up for, the, for those that might not have heard he said no <laughs> <laughs> it's a big statement he said no okay because you do me to more like i could do me to new people call villa and my zone you can do people uh you can do it villa so you know sometimes show appreciation i want i mm. want to cook sometimes you know if she earns more money you cooking right <laughs> <laughs> she earns more money you staying home you cooking but that, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, in my household, right? That's not going to happen. I'm going to be... I'm going to be... I'm going to be the breadwinner, right? The main breadwinner. Right. That's jo- not going to happen. Josh has some unqualified thoughts. You want to... Go ahead. Yeah, I can... Okay, because I'm going to... I'm going to be a role model. 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 That's why I said, like, no, like it has to be the woman because mm. I would love to eat my wife cooking, and then mm. and I, I and I, I love cooking. <laughs> I will cook for my wife, okay, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's the wife job. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. That's a different so, wouldn't that go both ways? So, Both ways, but, but for me, like, is for okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. 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 Because right now my mom cooks a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So if wh- when I do get married, I do want to step up to the cooking thing, right? Mm. But that will also depend. Like as let's say I continue to stay as a nurse, I might not be able to cook you a meal and wake up at four in the morning before I go to right. work to cook, right? So I think there will have to be an understanding of like who does what, when. You can meal prep if that's a thing. Um, although I like what CJ said about like still, I think Josh said it too, like still being will being willing to help right. yeah this yeah. is not right. like all the time it's you like made it major sound- no 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 <laughs> Ma- most of the time right most of the time but so the reason sorry yeah. we, we, no I'm, I'm good go ahead so the reason um i'm gonna sit it up a little bit because this is a little interesting uh, the <laughs> so reason it is this is no 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 um, <laughs> real quick no so yeah, yeah, the yeah. reason the reason i said women should the reason i said my woman would cook, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I believe I subscribe to this thought, right? This school of thought where you need to wi- subscribe right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, women, women go for. <laughs> okay, I believe this. I believe this. Okay, mm-hmm. women go for men that are better than them in terms of making income. Okay, mm-hmm. you're not a woman's not gonna a woman's not gonna respect a man that makes less than her. Let's be honest. You think so? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. I don't want you to like me. Like me. I don't want you to lose your Like me. Like like me. Nu le pa hen. A lot of a lot of like a lot of reasons why. Well, one of the reasons why, mm-hmm. right? He can rock that eh, and the ten did not get the na um nakhe. The women have access to make enough money as the men sometimes even more, and. They got can traditional thing. Can um nang sunun si si na chup na chup na si and they got can. That's where problem arises, right? I'm saying that's what I'm trying to say. The reason I would say my wife, I should, my wife should cook, is because I believe that a man should make more than the wife. So if we really think about it, I think it's very dependent. Like it really depends on who is the main breadwinner, right? If she's the main breadwinner, she's working most of the time. Of course, the man's got to cook, but that's not going to happen in my in my household, you know, type stuff. Yeah, you spoke like off of experience, right? You you know my family. Mm-hmm. We're really close. My mom does sushi, and my dad's a pastor. Income wise, they're kind of you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's lower. My mom's lower. Sometimes it's higher. Sometimes my dad. So like it switches off. And coming into the United States, oh, you know how my dad is very strict, old mm-hmm. fashioned. I'm like telling that. you, mm-hmm. life paza, you know, <laughs> life paza <bizarre>, poporte. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, you're staying in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You're cleaning, right? Yeah. Tatin ngayo, tatin ngayo la. So you know, very, very, very traditional. Like, like bazaar and tiko lahat mo. You're staying in the kitchen. Nang mani roll na chum la, nang mani ten la tiki se. But as time went on, you know, mm. experience and stuff that happens in our life just changes you. You know, it changes you. And now, kanu chori entun la, kapatso chuni tlak sa buoy ka tahang chum. Make you, you know, a buoy peng. So it's it's kind of cute. Kind of mm. cute that they're doing that. Yeah. yeah, that's my experience. But I don't think Rebecca agreed with me. She she gave me a little like smirk. What? No, I mean, you're not wrong, right? That's mm. your opinion. That's what you want, mm-hmm. and that's totally fine. So you're just gonna have to find someone that agrees with you. Right. I think he's trying to force a yes out of you. I'm trying to explain. No, no, no. I'm trying to explain the no, reason. I totally get yeah. your perspective, like which is totally fine. I think it's just because I I have a job that I want to continue doing. Well, mm-hmm. that's also a different thing. I don't want to stay bedside nursing forever, so it might right. be a different picture for me as well. But I think there just needs to be an understanding, a balance, whatever it is you want. You know, like between yeah. you and them. And. Yeah. <sighs> Last statement, okay? La- last thing from me, He's all right? He's so passionate about when, this. When you have children, when you have children, right? The wife's got to stay at home most of the time. At yeah, least for the first true. year or two, right? Right, right. They got kind. When we're thinking about income, when we're thinking about work, I think the wife, the woman is at a, at a disadvantage, right? Because she has to take some time off. I would want my wife to stay with my kids like the first few years, right? They got kind of... In the context of traditional, right, I want my wife to stay home uh, for maybe a year or two, and that's gonna set her back in her career. But think I can, and I don't want to speak for women. You know, how are women more happy pursuing their career, or or are women happy more happy, you know, um, with their family, you know, raising their children? Because and that's down to personal choice, right? But like Becca said, I'm gonna find a, I'm gonna find me a woman that, you know, that wants to does it. You know, she yeah, she can have a career, but you know, when it comes to family and children, I think she I want a woman that focuses a little bit more on like the children and the you know the child rearing side right mm-hmm. um again i'm a little traditional so that's that's my thought that's my two cents yeah, yeah. I, I think your perspective is <clears throat> totally valid and no i agree with you too to the point that um that you you make more that everything goes according to the plan but mm-hmm. if in case it doesn't then right. you still have to have that flexibility mindset right. of like oops my business plan might not work out as well as I thought, so maybe I just have to take a couple months yeah. off, and she does the work too. You know, possible. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be tough pill to swallow. You know, right, to be, to right. Be completely but honest. it could happen. Yeah. Right? It could happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Hopefully not. <laughs> as a man, you. I don't want to be in that position. Like you know, right. as a man, I don't want to be. I don't want to be disrespected by my wife. You know, but, I, I want. I want to respect myself too. I wouldn't respect myself if my wife made more and she was a main breadwinner. I wouldn't respect myself. So, but yeah. Man. You and me need a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to learn. All right, let's move on. You let's need to learn on. to this love is... yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. This is this is too much. Um, but so since we're on the topic of uh, yeah. of family and all that kind of stuff, right? We're gonna go quick fire around. Okay, I got I got some Do questions. It. This is for all the boys out there. All right, listen up. We're gonna pick her brain. Okay, quick fire around. What's your type of man? Funny, nice, caring. Okay. Friend to me. Rank these three in order. Mm. Looks, personality, or success. Mm. Personality, personality, success, looks. Okay. Um, what is your biggest turnoff and why? Ooh. Someone was just cocky. Like you could be look good looking, 
mm. and act like clean enough. Yeah. You just can't be cocky about it. Mm. Don't. Cannot. Cannot. Take my. <laughs> you could go. You could go from a ten reel down to like minus ten if Oof. you just act cocky in front of me. That's it. Ooh. I'm done. All right. Yeah. How big of a family do you want? Big or small? I want three kids. Three kids? Yeah. Yes. Oh. That's that's ideal, bro. <clears throat> Five. Me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Real quick. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you for telling us. <laughs> Thank you. No one asked, but I said it. Right. We'll, we'll tell your future wife. <laughs> uh, All right. Time to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. All right. Um, what kind of work should, should your husband do? Work as in like, not like what kind of job. Yeah. But what should his like life mission? What 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 do you want your husband to um, do? <laughs> sure. No. Someone has asked me this, right? I think someone that is growing in their work. Mm. I I would prefer if they're not mm. stagnant. Mm. So whatever job it is you do, I think you can always grow. You can always right. build something. Eventually, if you get to that point where you're like, this is it for me, then it should be a life where you're comfortable enough with your family. Like yeah. you guys are all happy with the state <clears throat> that you're in. But a growing. But Tian gentle meet the not to know me the you don't care? As long as they know God, whatever job it is they do, mm -hmm. if it is in alignment with like in their relationship with God. Okay. Then, yeah. All right. Any future music projects? This is the last question. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm in Chicago. Tomorrow night we're <coughs> shooting a music video. Oh. Um, Shout out Rhinos. <laughs> yeah. Rhinos. <laughs> Rhinos is Rhinos. shooting it. Yes. Uh, shooting it. The song is actually written by Yellow Music. Mm -hmm. uh, Shout out Yellow uh -huh. Music too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a beautiful song. Yeah, Sisho got to listen mm -hmm. to a snippet of it. Um, uh, it um, it's it's Ramla in Ramla. a sense that it's not like a patriotic song, but it's more so um, you're thinking of like back home. Mm. You know, should I sing the f a snippet? Ooh. Go ahead, yeah, yeah, please. Lai ram kalung tin sunga na cha umun na la ka ro na ka. Uh, oh, was that Falam? Mm. Yes. Falam? Yeah. yeah. Falam. So for those people who don't understand Falam, right? It's nice. saying Lai Ram Om. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So that's actually really good. So we have a little short game for you, okay? Oh. We are going to we're going to give you some Sintang words, because Suchi and we were Sintang, right? Cool. We're gonna give you some mm -hmm. I was gonna do Burmese, but you spoke you speak Burmese. I was gonna do Sang in Burmese today too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. So we're gonna do Sintang. You are going to do you and Josh team, okay? You guys are gonna go to come you guys are going to come up with uh Mizo. Mizo phrases, Mizo saying Mizo words. Do you speak Mizo? No. <laughs> no. Okay, fine. You can, you can guess. You can guess. You're gonna be a team. Okay, <laughs> you we guess, can guess first, yeah. okay? okay? All right, okay. so come on, come on, come on, come on. You don't speak Sintang? No. Oh, okay, got it, got it. I see the point now. Okay. Kavai pu. Josh, come on now. Kavai pu. Kapum. Chatin rot. Pum. Kavai pu. Kavai pu. Kavai pu. Pu. Kavai pu. Kavai kapia. I'm happy. I'm I'm excited. Oh, uh, let me let me give them. Did I make this too hard? Kavai pu. No, it's not. It's not. It's not hard. It's just. The I've been out the whole day. I didn't. I, I I'm haven't tired? been home. Kavai pu. Close. I miss home. No. <laughs> I'm home. No. <laughs> All right. Kavai pu means I'm hungry. Y'all bad at this. What? <laughs> what? I'm hungry. Kavai pu. Uh -huh. just woke up. What does that have to do with? I just woke up in the morning. I'm hungry. That's yeah, why I said that was that <laughs> was that was, me, that was a very bad <laughs> example. <laughs> that's you guys. That was me. That was me. That's right. not Go a normal what, what thing. Um. <laughs> Jin Jin Kuk Tika. So let's see. Bolung Sao I can tree in Katin Lale Kangan Kikehu. Kangan Kikea. Kangan Kikea. Kangan Kikoin Kapum La. Okay. Katim Lai, right? Almost, almost, almost. Almost, almost. But what you gotta do before? I'm gonna shower. Yeah! I was gonna say that too. Yeah. Alright, one more, okay? Should I guess it? Yeah, Alright, you ready? <clears throat> Maybe. Alright. Ting tang tam ka tiam hu. You speak a lot of languages? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was like <laughs> the ball is here. You know, that, <laughs> that was no, I know how to play guitar. Contest, give a contest. Oh yeah. 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 see you do this. Ting ting tang ting tang tam ka tiam hu. I know how to play guitar. Who means a lot. So oh. very. Um, ding dong, ding dong, ding you guys thought I was gonna get it the first round. <laughs> yeah, it was so easy. I handed it to you right there. Yeah. Okay. 
You got last one, one, last one. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, koho lete hai kani tam kani tam le but ke dan thate kani shok le hanu kavaya. Ah, hanu kavaya. You guys are going out together? Almost. Mm, almost. Okay, hanu kavaya. We're hanging out. No, I don't. Mm. Nuwa kleng lai. Yeah. Yeah. Ati jat hai ngay. You got two out of four. Two out of four, true, right? Two out of four. Two out of four. Okay, your turn. Mizo phrases. I gotta ask, huh? Mm-hmm. When getting calm. Oh, sorry. Can you pull me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait. Um, is that actually? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this guy has wow. been doing his research. <coughs> uh, Voin. I keep saying Voin. Today we went to church. Uh huh. And then now we're doing podcast. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm not tired by the way. It's just <laughs> what is <laughs> matse? Matse is but. Oh, me? Me? Oh, me? ain't no way, bro. Matse is that. me. Matse. 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 But because of you, the next time I come, I'm going to hear the song. Oh, see, see, see. Come on, Ivex, see, All right, all right. Go ahead. Uh, what's what's another phrase that you guys you can come up with? So we're we're one of one, one for one. Ooh, all right. Gotta make it tough. Mm. I thought you were supposed to be on my side. Now you're guessing. Me the tan pui hia cha. Me tang dor ki cha. Sima. Oh, me uh, say that again. Me the tan pui hia cha. Me kut tang rian tuan hia cha. Oh, me the tan. Me the tan. I knew that one was gonna throw you guys off. Yeah, it does. Me the tan. Uh, give us uh, in the context. Say it in the context. Um. So you know, as a Christian. Me the tan pui hita. Me dot hita. Close, no, almost. Me zang fa, me zon roa. Me ngai tiam. No. Me hoi kom he. No. What? Me the tan. What zon roa? Zon roa. That's what you are thinking for. Oh then. no no no. Okay. That's ngai tua. Ah, the tan. Me the tan pui hita. Me the tan pui. That was really good accent though, Sujay. <laughs> okay. What is it? It's something that we can do in everyday like life. Oh, we can, we can, we can, we can pray. A house, hello. Me bomb, me bomb, Oh, I was gonna say and pray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. last I'm not one. My candy. Last, last one. one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah, last one. Okay. I'll, I'll ask you phrases from Sucho's um, favorite Mizo song. Okay. Mm, okay. So, Lam uh, we, yeah. we sort of know what that means, uh, right? Dance, la. right? Okay. Um, it's actually a very sad song. I know. Very, very sad. Mm. Yeah. So, Zan Mutsi Nahar. What does that mean? Zana Eat the Har. In Hit the Har. Oh, in Hit the Har. Yeah. You know, Tin Laya Tsam. Tin Laya Tsam. Yeah. Tsam is the same thing. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite line from the song? Kabana kaye, lam dui la. So what is kabana kaye? All right, let's let's guess that then. Kabana kaye. Kabana kaye. Huh? It's actually kabana kaye. Come on, um, come on my come on my bun. Uh, my bun. bun? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds so bad. Come on my. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean like like come sleep on my like my, on my like arm. <laughs> <laughs> What is oh, that? what he, I meant? No, he meant he meant like kaban. Kaban Yeah, kaban He's the last one. That's ban. Come on, bro. <laughs> We're gonna get canceled <laughs> sooner than we kaban expected. Na, kaban na kai. Kaban na kai. <laughs> Alright, sorry. Alright, come back. Come back. That means come. Wait, I need to calm down because my face is all red right now. Uh, come sleep on my arm. Man, man. <laughs> that's what I initially thought. Yeah. Too. What do you What do you think is like gaiin? Gaiin. I think that's the word that you guys are to like saying. guy to like come on <laughs> like to step on like in <laughs> gai. No. Come, it, come could, come it could. It could, but no. guy means hold. Oh, come hold. Oh, me. like gabana guy means like come hold come my hand my, or like my oh. arm. Oh. Yeah. Ilam dulila. Now that you know, see <laughs> That means dance with me. Hold, come hold my hand and dance with me. Kabana kaya landu. Kami kita dengan macam. Senang kau mentoba. 
Kabana Patilo. Kalam do Hutsa. That makes no so, sense. Yeah, though. that. Wow. Yeah, so, it's, a, it's a good song. It's a deep Four years song. later, yeah. I found four out. Four years later. Yeah. Atesh Menoka. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought you were speaking in Sentong. So you you remember you remember that um that reel with Lillian that we did? Uh Hong Hu quick Hongku. See, today we have a guest that speaks Burmese, all right? Yeah, mm. so, yeah we're we're gonna close up in in Burmese. Oh wary. That's so perfect. Oh, What's no, your name? No, no. oh. But my, but my, Mongle, Mongle, I do have one. Yeah, um, hope that tomorrow the US ma need all leave, but my, so many are taking shoe. Oh, Emma, tomorrow, make a catch. Oh, so raw Emma, then my, my, so many. Then my, my, so many are who tying that my, so many take pure, ah, time, time to take my, but take pure who. So, um, I'm in the same boat as you. I haven't spoken in uh, English. Yeah. I haven't spoken in a long time. Gotcha. 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 I forgot. That's a chair, I'm Tiro. Gachi, Gakwe, Gang, Gahaji, Nga, Salon, Salin, Zakwe, Zamisenya, Dabalinche, Dying Bow, Dying Gow, Dying Boo, Dying Two, Dying Boo, Naji, Naji, Nya, Nya, Naji, Dabet, Tade. Yeah, ain't no way, but we used to sing those songs in Burma. Mama wawa tataka akaba tama okay so kaba kaba mama ya nya la tata tata the 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 chain gale but thank you Jiji Yanzen and all thank you so much uh to Rebecca for coming on yeah, i know it's a uh, you know you're about to you're supposed to go on a different you know trip right now but um thank you so much for being here it was fun um i hope we didn't say anything that like that got us in like trouble But yeah, anyways. You. <laughs> at Next the end of the day, come back, we, we're definitely at, doing another episode. Yeah. Yes. At the end yeah. of the day, right? This uh -huh. is unqualified thoughts. All right. Rebecca is qualified, but us, we're unqualified uh -huh. thoughts. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Bring me down here. Anyways, uh, thank you again for watching. Subscribe, like. Uh, we're, going to be, <laughs> we're going to be. We're going to be. We're going to be doing this kind of stuff uh, yes, yes. in the future. Again, want to give a shout out to the boys, right? Uh, this episode was possible because of uh, Cross Harmony and uh, Veritas right here. Veritas are the chat box people, right? Yes, yes. Um, we want to say thank you to those people. And uh, want to say thank you to Rebecca. Can something huh? before you close off? Yes. Yeah, so this is really cool. I hope you guys keep mm -hmm. it going. Um, I can see it growing. Thank you, thank um, you. Onto a better couch as well. Da. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's a Chicago uh, phrase, by the way. I felt very comfortable from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think that's really like a good um, environment and kind of atmosphere that you're already putting together. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate it. So whoever's watching, um, I think you guys have so many more projects upcoming, right? Yep, so continue yep, to support yep. them. Um, I'm also possibly thinking maybe in the future a podcast somewhere. So uh, if that comes up, maybe we can collab uh, in the future. Yes, yep, come yep, on yep, here, yep. promote it. We're gonna put you on. Yeah, we're gonna put you on. We're big, bro. Yeah. As if we're big. But, But mostly, cheers to today. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye.